So we continue from uh, application of duration. Application of duration. Duration is very important to a human being. Uh, morphological variation can be used to identify individual among the species in the population. Individual. But when we talk about physiological variation, <clears throat> aside from using it to identify individual, it can also be used to solve some, you know, issues. So, for example, let's say crime detection. Number one, crime detection. We can use duration to solve crime detection. Uh, duration can also be used to determine fatality. Determine fatality of disputed child. Duration can also be used in marriage counseling. Marriage counseling as well as blood transfusion. Blood transfusion. <clears throat> so when you talk about crime detection, duration has proved effective. For example, DNA fingerprints. So when you talk about uh, DNA in advanced country, when someone commits crime, so at the scene where the crime has been committed, the body cells of that person will be extracted. They are, you know, body cells of the person that committed the crime. And this will be taken to lab for DNA analysis. After which, this, uh, the crime, can, the criminal can be detected through testing of suspects. So the suspect will be tested and will fetch out the criminal. So that is how we use it to test, you know, to detect crime in advanced country. And we also say that we can also use it to determine, you know, the paternity of a disputed child. Like there are some group, there are some traits that are present, like ability to taste PTC, uh, ability to roll tongue, blood group. There are some variations that can determine the type of offspring that some parents we have, and that's uh, the type of offspring that some parents will get. Also in marriage counseling, the genotype, uh, and also the you know blood transfusion. And when we talk about blood transfusion, it is very important because we are victims of accidents that lose plenty blood or somebody that just carry out surgical operation. So there are ways in which we can carry out blood transfusion. But before we carry out blood transfusion, there must be compatibility between the recipient as well as the donor. Let's say for example, someone has an accident and wants to carry out blood. So we have four blood group, blood transfusion. So when you talk about blood transfusion, we have blood group. And we have the antigen and the antibody present. So we have blood group A, we have four blood group, blood group B, we have blood group A, B, and we have blood group O. So in blood group A has antigen A and antibody B on the plasma, while antigen A on the uh, rebus. Some with blood group B has antigen B and anti antibody A on the plasma. Why antigen uh, blood group A and B have antigen A and B and have no antibody? No antibody, neither. Neither A or B. Neither anti A nor anti B. Why yeah? You so have neither antigen A or antigen B but have anti A and anti B antibody. So that is the differences in individuals. So the whole human being we are divided into four main blood groups. So those people that have blood group A, 
their characteristics is that they have antigen A on their red blood cell and antibody B on the plasma. They are both that have blood B have antigen B on the red blood cell and antibody A on the plasma. And blood group A B people or individuals have antigen A and B. They are predominant, equally present. And neither antibody A nor antibody B is present. Then the last blood group is blood group O. Neither antigen A and B or B is present. Neither antigen A nor B is present. But they have antibody A and B. So when we talk about this blood group, let's talk about the way in which they donate. So when somebody will have blood group A, blood group B, the blood group AB, we call it universal recipient. AB is universal recipient because it can, you know, <coughs> receive blood. Somebody with blood group AB is a universal recipient, it can receive blood from blood group A and B, from all the blood groups. He can receive blood from any of those blood groups because he possesses both antigen A and B. But blood group O is called universal donor. That means it can donate blood to any group, but it can receive from all the groups. But blood group A can receive from all the blood groups. But it can only donate to blood group AB. Why blood group O is called universal donor? Because it can donate blood to any of them. But it can only receive. Let's talk about donor uh, recipient compatibility. Donor recipient compatibility. So during blood transfusion, the compatibility of the donor and the recipient must be, you know, put into consideration. So this is just this our blood group. We can donate to and receive from. <clears throat> so we have blood group A. We have the B, we have the AB, and we have the O. So we said blood group A can donate to blood group A. Blood group A can also donate to blood group AB. Since AB can receive from anybody. So blood group A can donate to blood group A and it can also donate to blood group AB. Why blood group A can receive from blood group A can receive from blood group A and blood group O because blood group O can donate to anybody. Is that clear? So blood group B can donate to blood group B and blood group AB because blood group AB can receive from anybody. Then blood group B can only receive from blood group B and blood group O. We talk about blood group AB. Blood group AB is called universal recipient, so it can only receive blood. From blood group AB can donate, sorry, can donate to blood group AB. Okay, it can also donate to blood group, blood group AB. It can only donate to blood group AB. It can only donate to blood group AB. Yes, blood group AB can only donate. To block AB, but block AB can receive from all groups. Block AB can receive blood from all the groups. Block A can receive from A, can receive from B, can receive from AB, can receive from O. That's why it's called universal recipient. 
Développe O can donate to all groups. Can donate to all the groups. Block O. Someone that have block O can donate to block A, can donate to block B, can donate to block AB as well as block O. But someone that have block O can only receive from block O and AB. A, AB, no, O can only receive from block O. Can only receive from block O. So that is a donor recipient compatibility. <clears throat> so let's find out the antigen and antibody reaction. So when we talk about blood, uh, blood transfusion, there is a group of people that can donate to each other. Uh, we have clumping or what we call no clumping or agglutination. So let's find out the antigen an antibody reaction. <clears throat> reaction between donor and recipient. Select our table. This is our donor. This is our recipient. So let's see we have <coughs> A, WB, AB, and O. Here we have A. So let's find out the chances we have these are block A, block B, block AB, block O, block A, block B, block AB, block O. So we already know that since this is the donor and this is the recipient, so we want to find out those ones that are compatible. First of all, we know that AB is universal recipient. So AB can receive from any blog. AB can receive from any blog. And there will be no clumping. No clumping. AB can receive from any blog. And there will be no clumping. Because in universal recipient, <clears throat> the same thing as O, O can also donate to anybody, and there will still be no clone. O can donate to anybody. There will be no problem. So now, the donor is A and the recipient is A. So there will be no problem too. A can donate to A. But when the donor is B and the recipient is A, then <laughs> there will be clumping. There will be clumping because the, their antigen is different. Or agglutination. AB cannot donate. AB cannot donate to block A. Can only donate to 
a b so there is clump in here so b cannot donate to a there will be clump in here b can donate to b no clumping A B, A B cannot donate to B. There will be clumping. And here too, O and A. O, A cannot donate to O. Clumping will be here. B cannot donate to O. Clumping. A B A B donate A B cannot donate to O A B can only donate to A B So there will be clumping here too So we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 why right here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is the antigen antibody reaction between donor and recipient. So there will be clumping here. There will be no clumping because they are the same blood group. Why right here there is not the same blood blood group? Likewise, uh, AB, there will be clumping, there will be agglutination. As a result of the fact that the antigen are not the same, so they will react with each other. So that is the reaction between the antigen and antibody during a blood transfusion.